They call themselves the Bad Batch. Quite an impressive display. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie, this is going to be my new Star Wars trailer for The Bad Batch. I'll explain how this crosses over with the events of The Mandalorian in present day, what's going on with the other characters like Obi-Wan Kenobi, what's happening with Grogu during this period, what's happening with Ahsoka, and all the other characters too. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The Mandalorian Season 2 finale is going to be happening literally in a day as I'm posting this video, so there'll be a whole bunch of stuff happening for that, as well as all the other Star Wars and Marvel stuff that happened in the past week. A lot of you have also been asking me to do a timeline video because there are so many Star Wars series that they just announced, especially the live action Star Wars series, so I'll explain what the timeline is starting with this series. But if you have no idea who the Bad Batch is and you didn't watch the Clone Wars Season 7 episodes that Dave Filoni did this past year, I did a couple videos for that so I'll link those in the description. The Bad Batch is basically a group of defective, genetically abnormal clones that wound up becoming Clone Force 99. They call them the Bad Batch because they don't look like all the other clones, but their genetic differences give them a bunch of special abilities. So it's Hunter, the leader, he's the one with the voiceover at the beginning of the trailer, Wrecker, Crosshair, Tech, and then Echo, the cyborg, the other clone, joined them at the end of the Clone Wars episodes after they rescued him. But the whole thing with this series is that it picks up immediately after Revenge of the Sith, and they're having to deal with Emperor Palpatine's new regime and the way the Empire, people like Grand Moff Tarkin, who's newly promoted to Grand Moff, he was just Moff Tarkin during the Clone Wars, the way that they're using them as their new stormtroopers, going around subjugating the rest of the galaxy, bringing them in line with the Emperor's new wishes. It's still kind of a transition phase from clones to stormtroopers, like they still have the clone armor, but it's all white now like the classic stormtroopers, the armor itself won't change for a couple more years, and if you watch the Clone Wars finale, it explains how Ahsoka goes into hiding, leaving her last lightsaber that Anakin Skywalker had given her before he became Darth Vader, only there's a time jump when Darth Vader shows up, it's several years later, and they've fully transitioned to the new Imperial classic armor from the original trilogy. So the Bad Batch series sort of takes place in between those events, and I'll talk about the other series in a second too. This is also the period where Darth Vader and the Inquisitors had started to hunt all the Jedi going around. So for instance, the events of Jedi Fallen Order sort of cover that, Vader going around hunting down the remaining Jedi when they start popping up. All that stuff had been happening for the past couple of years when that picks up, so this will cover some of that. One of the places that they go back to during the trailer is the cloning facility at Kamino, obviously, because the clones are still very much alive during this period, they haven't died off yet. When the Empire was born, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, the Emperor publicly stated that he shut down the Kamino facility, but secretly we know that's not the case, he just started conducting his cloning experiments in secret to learn how to clone himself. And since a lot of that is happening on the Mandalorian now, I'll talk about Grogu and Moff Gideon, the other characters, and what's happening with them during the events of this series. But one of the other big Mandalorian crossover characters is a much younger version of Fennec Shan. You see her in that same armor. She's about the same age as Grogu, pretty close to it, so she'd probably be in her early 20s when this series is happening. But Ming-Na will be playing her character. She was talking about it on her Twitter last week. Speaking of other Mandalorian Easter eggs, you notice those giant droids that the Bad Batch is fighting in this trailer also look exactly like the Dark Troopers from the Dark Forces video game, just painted white. It should go without saying that Dave Filoni is the showrunner of the Bad Batch series in addition to all the stuff he's doing with the other live action series like the Ahsoka series, the Mandalorian series. 
So you can kind of see their grand plan to set up a lot of Easter eggs and hints for things that we'll see in the other live action series that are coming later in the timeline or that are happening right now, like on The Mandalorian. But there are other TV shows that will debut in the next couple of years that take place right after this as well. Like the tentacle creature here that they're escaping from looks very similar to the creature from The Mandalorian that ate Grogu in his pod during Season 2 Episode 3. The Mandalorians during this period had just taken back the planet Mandalore from Darth Maul. Bo-Katan had become regent right at the end of the Clone Wars after they got rid of him in the Shadow Collective. But what happened during this period is that she resisted Imperial rule. The Emperor had her deposed and replaced with Gar Saxon, who became his new puppet. And if you remember all of Darth Maul's former Mandalorian super commandos, the Maul DeLoreans that had the horns on their helmets, they became Imperial super commandos, basically the same thing, just serving at the will of the Emperor. So we'll also see Bo-Katan, also probably Ahsoka, show up during this series a little bit as well, too. Right now, when this is happening, Ahsoka is about 17, 18 years old, and she's gone on the run. She's in the Outer Rim, hiding out for a hot minute. But eventually, Bail Organa finds out where she is and brings her into service of the Rebellion in its early days. Mando would be a couple years younger than Ahsoka, but he's still a teenager in training with the Death Watch, the Children of the Watch Mandalorians. During this period, right when this is happening after Revenge of the Sith, he's already taken his oath and put the helmet on. Grogu would be in his early 20s, so you have to picture an even tinier version of Grogu. And this is the beginning of the period, he said, where his memory goes dark, after the mystery person rescued him from the Jedi Temple before Anakin Skywalker killed all the other younglings at Order 66. Press F in the chat to pay respects for them. Eventually, they'll reveal who that mystery person was on the Mandalorian series, but there are some solid theories so far. The reason his memory went dark is most likely because whoever saved him used the Force ability to wipe out or block people's memories, and they just erase those events from Grogu's mind. That's not a light side or a dark side Force ability necessarily. Any Jedi can learn to do it, but it's very advanced, so it wouldn't have been any random Jedi that could have done it. During the events of this show, Moff Gideon is still a young officer in the Imperial Security Bureau, and Thrawn hasn't quite become an admiral yet, but he's quickly rising through the Imperial ranks in the early days after the Clone Wars. He became an admiral faster than pretty much anybody in the history of the Empire. You remember that we have a couple Mandalorian spin-off series that are going to be set during the same time period coming up in the next couple of years. We have the Ahsoka series with Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka, and then we have the Rangers of the New Republic series about all the X-Wing pilots. All the characters from The Mandalorian and those other new series that they introduce will cross over and eventually build up to a big crossover event where Grand Admiral Thrawn will be the main villain. But we'll see Grand Admiral Thrawn before that, like a really big epic battle in a couple years. They haven't said too much more about it than that. They just said that they will build up towards that event. Also during this period, Darth Maul escaped at the end of the Clone Wars, so right after Revenge of the Sith, he also goes into hiding and is rebuilding his power base back up in the Crimson Dawn crime syndicate. So this series takes place right before the events of Jedi Fallen Order, which is about five years later. Cal Kestis finds the Jedi Holocron with the names on of the other Jedi, manages to save it from Darth Vader. Then you have the events of Solo, a Star Wars story where Darth Maul resurfaces. Then right after the events of Solo, you have the events of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series where Hayden Christensen is coming back to play Darth Vader and for Anakin Skywalker flashbacks. That's about 10 years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. Then a couple years after that, you have the events of Star Wars Rebels. Then after that, you have A New Hope, Luke destroying the Death Star at the Battle of Yavin. Then nine years after that, sort of just skipping over the events of the original trilogy, Mando finds Grogu, and you have the beginning of the events of the Mandalorian series. And then about a year after that, during the Mandalorian Season 2, we pick up with Ahsoka Tano. The events of her new live-action series will take place during what's happening right now in The Mandalorian. Hopefully that kind of explains what's going on. I believe the Bad Batch episodes are supposed to premiere sometime in the first half of next year. I think there'll be 8 to 10 episodes in season 1. I don't know how many seasons they plan on going, maybe 4 to 5 seasons. There was a bunch more footage that dropped, so I might try to do one more trailer video before I do my Mandalorian season 2 finale video. That'll be Friday, so just make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss any of those episodes. It's going to be really crazy, but there's so much awesome stuff coming up. I'm actually really excited about everything. Cannot wait to say goodbye to the crap year that 2020 has been. We're almost to 2021. You've almost made it. While you wait for everything, click here for that Star Wars trailer for the new Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 2 finale video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.